I had a lot of love for this record. So again, I wanted to, I wanted to do this. Like yeah. I didn't want anyone else to do this. We start off with anyone for you. <laughs> that. I love the, f it's all about that piano, man. Yeah. So I love the fact that it's not a Steinway, a Beckstein or a Bosendorfer. It's yeah. an upright Joanna yeah. in a Western saloon bar yeah. with a whiskey shooting across the bar into the hands of a dusty cowpoke yeah. with a carl shark and a gunslinger looking at it, right? You're, that's exactly it. So we recorded down in Bermondsey. So I would get the train here, to, I'd get the train to London Bridge and then walk down Bermondsey Street to Maloko, to the pool. And there's a baby grand in the corner and there's a few different, you know, there's a whirly in one corner and, and then there's this shonky <laughs> upright piano. And almost every time without fail, we'd do the baby grand and we worked with a guy called Nikolai that played the keys. And um, he would do a pass on the baby grand and we'd go, I mean, yeah, I mean, it sounds posh and sparkly, <laughs> but try it on the upright and every time I was like that's so much better and I'd, I'd gone through um I'd been listening to Primal Scream you know and that kind of I guess it's a kind of gospel feel and then and Vampire Weekend released the um what was the big tune off because the one I'm obsessed with is This Life but there was another song of Father of the Bride which I can't remember now. We'll go back Doesn't to matter, it. But yeah. again, it's that kind of rhythm on a piano. And it's like, oh, I want a bit of that. That feels good instantly. Um, so we had written the song. And even when I played the song acoustically, it's much slower. It's like a picked. That's how it feels natural. And it, and it, and it feels good to do that too. But in the studio, it was one of the first songs we wrote it's one of the first songs we produced. It's the first song on the album. It's now the song we open the gigs with. And it just feels like a hello. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It feels like we're here. Yeah, and it's intimate. There's something really intimate about yeah. that piano. And actually, now that you're talking about it, for the first time I've realised that the last piano sound that I heard like that was actually one of my favourite albums ever recently, which is the, A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships by, by 1975. And Matty and George put an upright Joanna, more sort of like a Victorian England yeah. than a Victorian Western yeah, thing. Yeah, that you're yeah. But same time, you know, yeah. and it's so intimate. It's so wonderfully there. But that's the, that's the thing as well that Vampire Weekend do a lot, where there'll just be like a little Baroque thing happen on a piano, like that or in that vein. And it's like, because we get to that point as well, near the middle eight, ding, ding, ding. It becomes a bit blinky plonky. And there was also a, um, I'm always nervous around sampling. You know, like if you listen to Jamie T's first record, and you, which I did a lot, and yeah. you're like, I want to have skits and samples on my... It's like, well, he wasn't faking it. You can't just go and pick things out. Yeah. But there was this um, like Mongolian kids choir performance or whatever that we chopped up, and that's the, the that's in the bed, which I kind of tune out of now. I don't hear it until I do it. I'm like, oh, yeah, there they are. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with anyone for you. Brilliant. Yeah. And speaking of fun... This is the track two. <laughs> yeah. So green, green grass. Now I love this because it's got. I can, I can hear Stuart in this. Yeah. So when this first, when I first got to play this, because I come on after Chris every day, yeah. I joked, um, you know, j jokingly that oh, you know, George has at last George has written a song that doesn't mention a, a foreign place. But now I've heard because you did this. Gig, <laughs> you did this gig, so this was written on holiday. This is a, this is a holiday <laughs> funeral. Didn't you, you did a gig in the in the um, uh, that theatre the other day, and didn't you introduce it and say, yeah. tell us so what's the story attached? I can to tell the, the story. I love the like. The, so obviously we couldn't get away because of the lockdown, yeah. and so I started flicking through these old journals. Um, which I'd never intended on doing and it's where the anyone for you opens with Tiger Lily moved to the city and that was in a diary from 2015 2016 um and then there was one from a, like 2018 and all it said was green green grass blue blue sky you better throw a party on the day that I die and I checked the date and I was like oh I know exactly where we were and the story came back to me so me and two friends were in St Lucia right and there's this beach bar and the beach bar, honestly, the middle of is probably about twice the size of the table I'm sat at. For people at home, that's not very big. Yeah, size of a cricket bat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you could sit all the way around it. The guys that were inside it were selling, you could either get homemade rum punch that was just loose in an, a cool box or a local beer, local lager. So we were A, B in the two. You know, we were having yes. one of them, one of this. One of them. <laughs> and then this music started up. So loud, loud music and kind of 
I excused myself at some point and I started running down these little streets and I got to what I assume was the high street and uh, there was sound systems, like th about three different sound systems. There was people cooking food, there was hugging, there was dancing. It was beautiful, you know. Um, and I jumped in this shop that was on the corner and the girls that were working there, I said, what's going on? What What's the party? And they said, today uh, is a funeral day in our community and we're celebrating three lives that we've lost. And so, of course, when you turn back round and take it in then, if it was beautiful before, it's even more beautiful now and is unlike anything I had seen, you know, to celebrate the end of life. And that's where that lyric came from. And I was adamant, I was hell-bent on getting it on the record. And, and me and Joel actually wrote a completely different song with it as a chorus. I had written one before that that was completely different, but it just didn't do the lyric justice. Yeah. You know, it was like, no, it just isn't getting it over. Because I believe it's a, a sentiment I want to stand up next to and I want to sing it and I want to do it justice. That's wonderful. And wonderful that, that, good, that, that those shaking tushes, all that dancing yeah. is reflected in this song yeah. and the fact that you've, you know, got together with Stuart to do yeah. it and it's like, you know, it's dis hello, disco George, yeah, yeah. you know. And it, uh, we do funerals wrong, don't we? It's I think we do. It's, a diff it's funny because I've had a few people say, oh, how do you want your funeral? It's like, I don't know. I'm not, this isn't me saying I want people with like doing balloon art and, you know, I don't, like it's not that, but <laughs> I just, I wonder if, and maybe it's more a message for us while we're here, there are things worth celebrating. Often there isn't, I get that. But in the little things and the people you love, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, because you're not celebrating a death, you're celebrating no. a life. life. There you go. That's it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I, I When I found that out, it made me smile wider. Yeah. And I love the song all the more. Yeah. Uh, so we come to track three in Gold Rush Kid, yeah. and we find ourselves back in, in that same Western, yeah. with, with, with just the, just the, uh, the title alone, yeah. we're back in that Western saloon. Yeah, man. Um, so what's going on here? Yeah, it, it, it's almost a breakbeat on yeah. this. Are, are you sort of... Do you feel out of your comfort zone in in a way doing songs like this? Because I think that creatively is a very good place to be. I think I felt out of my comfort zone on the second half. I think we'll get to the point where on the record where I think this is the kind of this was uh, kind of in my vocabulary. I would say it's like the there's something about closing your eyes and picturing the festival audience and going well what feel because there's a moment where. On the first record, I remember we played what was tea in the park at the time, and I got on this tent stage. Firstly, it was rammed, and then we started playing Budapest. There was like four of us on stage. It's all a bit like, dare I say, pub bandy, <laughs> and we're playing for half an hour, and then we get to Budapest, and it's like, just people on each other's shoulders, arms in the air, and I remember getting off stage and saying to myself. I want more of that, you know. I, d I don't. I never intended on on getting there because I didn't know what that that was. But that felt good, you know. And I think Gold Rush Kid embodies that feeling of kind of that again. Um, the verse lyrics I had tried to get on the last record and it hadn't worked. But I loved them. They like it opens with this rock paper scissors I play against the mirror, and it kind of it does a really good job of succinctly kind of addressing just an inner monologue that's just pointless, no one's going to win, get on with your day kind of thing. And then as me and Joel would sit down, we'd have a day's writing, we'd, you know, maybe have a drink and then talk about the world. Um, and, and we started to talk about all the good that comes from touring and then also just letting ourselves dream about, yeah, but imagine just, you know, moving up to the highlands and disappearing and unplugging and just no one knows no one needs to know you know <laughs> if a tree falls you know that kind of thing um and it was that it was you know i'm, I'm running to the hills i'm yeah and it, it feels and, and by the middle eight there's there's a line about wanting to dance until the moon falls out the sky and your shoes fall apart and <laughs> it's just uh it's that I, I am looking forward to being sat in a field or no, no, I'll be on a stage. I'm looking forward to being on a stage in a field and people singing along with us. That's really cool. And I, there's something quite heartwarming about a, a lyric that you love that 
was homeless. Fine, it's like a yeah. it's like a dog getting rescued. Yeah. I mean, you know? It's the story of my life. People say, like, "How do you write?" And I say, it's, "It is like collage. It is just like well, you've got that idea there. Can that fit there?" Yeah. So we come to track four, Manila. You know what I'm going to say. You <laughs> love a place, don't you, George? George Ezra Barnett. You love a place. <laughs> I do. I think because, <laughs> like, again, on the first record, I travelled around Europe to get the ideas, right? And up until that point, I'd barely left the country, certainly not by my by myself, and I was convinced I was the first kid to ever do it. And that's the beauty of being 18 years old, isn't yeah. it? It's like, I was the first kid to ever hear Bob Dylan. I was the first kid to ever interrail around Europe, as far as I was concerned at the time. And I think that's a... It's something that stuck with me of the and do you know what maybe I was the first person because it, 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 and that's f f true for all of us it's like that I've never been to Manila but if I think about Manila I don't know what it's like it's 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 exciting it's <laughs> it's like it's a free pass to a new world almost yeah and so when writing I mean that was the one song that addressed the lockdown kind of directly and the lyric is no flights to Manila Lockdown Cinderella, which yes. I don't know if I get away with that or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have. <laughs> I know, I know, but it's, it still makes me smile. Um, and it's that, I've not said this word, but I'm going to try it. It's just groovy, that tune. It is, when I listen to it, it's got groove. And like in the middle eight, I was adamant that we didn't do another vocal middle eight. And David Clinky, who's a guitarist I've been working with for years now, <laughs> and we toured together and I said, man, I can't wait for you to play that solo live. And he was like, you're going to need to hire three more guitarists. There's about four layers of guitar on that bit. And I was listening to, um, do you know Bahamas? Do you know that name? He's a, a guy from Canada. And it's this, it's just guitar tone. And I was listening to a lot of that uh, Lake Street Dive, mm. that, that kind of American. There's a lot of good guitar tones in the world today. Yes, and I was, um, I wanted a bit of that. Hmm. Um, that's very cool. Uh, so we come to fell in love uh, at the end of the world. What we have here is an arena scarf waver, <laughs> right? Yeah. And the thing that warmed my cockles about this was that you've got some strings creeping in here, yeah. but similarly to your piano. It's not or it's not the strings from the orchestra. No. It's the it's it's the string quartet playing in your Georgian lounge yeah. or whatever. And there's yeah. something very intimate about that, isn't it? Yeah. I, uh, one thing I noticed years ago was there was this kind of common trajectory, which was singer songwriter does second record and employs massive choir. <laughs> Singer songwriter does album three and employs not only massive choir but the string section as well. <laughs> and you do, there is this opportunity where the kind of the budget goes up or the, even the trust from the label to try things, yes. you know, and the opportunity and and so you you start exploring. I mean, this was the one song that we got wrong initially. So there was a moment where I sat with the label and played seven songs, the first seven we'd properly recorded, and we played kind of one. It just got like that. It sounds great. Played the second. <laughs> sounds great. Got to track six. This just sounds great. So I was going, what? When? When does this change? You know, because it's not how I've known conversations in the past. And then the seventh song we played was "Fell in Love at the End of the World," and we had done this kind of raconteurs, white stripes, kung kung. It was just like right. on every beat. It did, bass, guitar, drums, all landing at the same time. And man, it was exciting, but it was just, I just please, George, just see what happens. You know, the kind of Brian Eno approach of flip it on its head. Just see if you did the opposite. Yeah. What would that sound like? And I'm always willing to try things out. My, my thinking being, well, we've got this. It's like on a game show. You've got that. I mean, you're going home with that. Do you want to gamble and try something else? So we went back in the studio. I think it's the most athlete sounding song on the record. <laughs> I think it's got the most kind of that vehicles and animals. It's a bit garagey almost. And again, it was a song I'd written a long time before actually. That, you mm. know, um, and yeah, we worked with a dude called Toby Tripp and he's just amazing. He would, that was another 
COVID remote hookup where he would kind of program in strings and maybe this is why they sound the way they're not so polished today he would program things in send them over we would drop them into the to what do you call it the project and listen and go yeah that sounds great that sounds great da, 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 da. Joel was really um he was referencing that um Lana Del Rey record I can't remember which one it's called it's got a dude's name in the title um but the strings on that yeah um and then yeah once we'd kind of landed on what it was they would put string days in and we'd get a few players in and they'd put it down a lot of it Toby played himself he's one of those very impressive musicians that can play a lot of instruments and act like it's normal (laughs) <laughs> you know that kind of like yeah. can we just address the fact that you know yeah so I, I do that song and I think this is where the record starts to shift a little bit I think it starts to excellent now track six don't give up mm. already with that title you've got a lot to live up to emotionally speaking because don't give up is one of the most beautiful songs ever by Peter Gabriel with Kate Bush but pushing past that What's that lovely wibbly wobbly sound at the beginning? Is it a slide guitar? No, so with the, it was nearing the end of making the record. Joel, and I think he did this deliberately. I think he kept it from me deliberately because I think he knew I'd have got obsessed with it. Yeah. Show me this program that is this database. It's called Arcade. And it's this database that if you pay for a subscription, um, different creators upload sounds that are free to sample. And so he showed me, and I was like, are you kidding? Because you can, tr- they're just there. You chop them up, reverse them. And so that was the, this is the first um, example on the record where that sound came from there. Um, the guitar part that's running underneath it was something I wrote on the last campaign and I would play each sound check. Um, and I was, I really wanted to use the guitar part and, um, while we were making this album for the first time I really started to struggle with sleep so I I wouldn't fall asleep until kind of 4am and I was obviously especially near in the end when we were actually in the studio subconsciously I was I think making the mental leap of oh well you're about to finish the album which means you're going to tour and last time you toured you were really unhappy you know I think there was this like feedback loop of like so then I'd get to the studio and um, have to curl up at some point and have a nap in some vocal booth or whatever but there was one night because all of the things you read say if you can't sleep get out of bed go and do something go and do something domestic load the dishwasher you know doesn't take my brain energy Yeah. yeah But I picked up my guitar and the, there's a lyric in that song which is I don't sleep too good and I work too hard and I'll never find love at the same old bars. And that was one of those kind of, ah, that feels good. Maybe this song has life in it yet. And uh, yeah. Man, I'm sorry you went through that. Um, I, I, I've been there. Like it's Imagine, like insomnia is a real killer. It, the thing is, like I don't mind putting my hands up and saying I'm not good at this I'm not good at that but be good at sleeping yeah. it's such a rubbish thing to be bad at just be good at sleep or what have you got to do man just shut your eyes go to sleep yeah and you'll be exhausted but it doesn't happen it's, it's just it can be a bit well it's kind of scary at times because you're like how long can this go on for yeah now mine was a year and I was sleeping eight hours a week oh man imagine that like, you know. Is this when you tell me you're like 25? No, I was <laughs> 35. Okay. <laughs> um, so, well, I'm, you're, you're better now, right? You feel better. You feel you're, you're yeah. all right. I had, like, obviously, we're recording this on the day that the album came out. And it's gone full circle. Something has been happening since, well, for the last few years. Um, where, for the most part, I feel much better about myself in general. And it's, it's a strange thing this album today should be the kind of catalyst for a lot of you know running away with thoughts and everything but I'm cool I'm just I don't know I feel in real time that this is going to be something I'll remember and that's a really lovely thing I don't think I was able to do that in the past good that's good to hear Um, back to the song Mm -hmm. uh, to don't give up you've 
you're, you're rhythmically in a different place. You've got this lovely groove propelling mm. it. The, the drummer's on a rim shot, yeah. gets a very crisp hi-hat that's sort of propelling it. Yeah. It feels, if, I mean, you use the word groovy. Yeah. This is groovy. Yeah, it's, so the guitar part that I was hung up on, it did have a little skip in it, so it would go like doom, 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 And just that at the beginning, holding on that first note, instantly gave it a bit of groove. Um, and also, there's there's no doubt that being in the studio with players, and not just players, but that Fabio, who played the drums on the whole record, we've toured with each other since we were 20. And so, whether he likes it or not, you know, <laughs> that we've got something when we play, it works. Um, and yeah, that there's that you can't, that's got to play a part in it. Speaking of grooves, Mm -hmm. um, you had to come up with one for a title, Dance All Over Me. Yes. I mean, so um, in your songwriting process, is there, mm -hmm. do you, lyrics come, do the tracks come first and the lyrics, or is it different with each track? You know, what's your, is there a process, a sort of formula that you, that you it have? It is different. It is, like I said earlier, the kind of collage-y, like, oh, there's that lyric, the green, green grass from however many years ago. I don't mind genuinely I don't mind putting a lyric on a shelf for four years and going well when it and then I'll sit down most evenings with the guitar when I'm at home and play the same you know four chords I've been playing since I was 15 but just maybe put the capo there maybe strum this pick that just see if something comes and um, see if I can cut and paste some of the lyrics from the shelf dance all over me though was like there was there was definitely times where me and Joel together hit walls, as it were, and there was one time in particular where we had been turning up, turning up, turning up, and nothing was coming, nothing was coming, nothing. And you can't help but be a bit like, A, oh, is that my lot? Like, is it just done now? Um, is it are we ever gonna write a decent song again <laughs> do you know like because i don't really know how we did it before yeah. if there was a formula you yeah know? um and so almost just to kind of flip the table we said well let's write a song we will never that you would never perform live you know let's and so do a leaper had just come out with her Oh, what's that record? I'm so bad with this stuff. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Lipa released an album in lockdown and it was just this disco phenomenon. It was awesome. Yeah. It was amazing to jump into. And we were like, right, let's try. Let's see what that's like. So there was a load of tempo. Joel kind of threw together this disco thing. And I remember this, um, there's a recording of Bob Dylan, I think in 1961, all around his debut in 62. And it's this really funny song where, and it's probably not on, actually. You probably shouldn't have, I don't know. But it's the whole thing is, if I could do it all over again, girl, I'd do it all over you. And it's hilarious. It's like, <laughs> it's, like it's really funny. And there's only a live recording of it. But I like that idea of like, dance at the, we we started singing the dance 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 um and i like the word dance all over me like it was making me laugh and then me and joel would kind of talk about what what are you picturing when you say dance all over me um but that uh, opens with the and the delivery that first day when we were doing the demo you would never want people to hear it was very and i don't know if this is a fair thing to say but it was very euro and yeah. it was very there's mountains on mars <laughs> and, and it wasn't Ernest. cool at all <laughs> yeah and we put it to bed we did and then we'd keep coming back to it and go like could we can we you know <laughs> Can we go there and then then there was which there always will be as a cautionary tale there's a knock on the door from any major record label where they say we reckon you've got another single in you you know that chat yes um and thank god they do because on the last record that's when we wrote shotgun and on this record i said come on let's just try it and then we we tried that kind of miley and ronson nothing breaks like a heart it's like well, what if country is disco and what if that's the so i got joel's got this beautiful old gibson guitar too old and too beautiful to be played by me but i started to pick it and we're like cool let's build it on that and then we wrote the post chorus ten i with me mm. in the studio so it more or less came to, sorry i just knocked you on my <laughs> no head. worries it, it more or less came together in the studio with the band there as well which is unlike us 
but man it was just like it was one of them where you sit back and go oh no but like what 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 have we done you know i really love it really came yeah. together yeah um we come to track eight i really like this one as well um i went hunting what a lovely intro mm. um is that a backwards acoustic guitar it, it's gorgeous um, that came from that was a lockdown thing so we, we went away to Norfolk before lockdown and stayed in this cabin and it was I mean I will always remember it because it's the trip that Joel got me onto whiskey yeah right, so, uh. so which uh, and I've never looked back um, <laughs> and I think that was a turning point in my kind of feeling comfortable with writing because I had kind of I did this um, interview with John and Ellis um, where I was able, I think, in part because of them, but in part where my head was at, to talk about this thing called Puro, which I experienced, which is this kind of, uh, it's like a OCD, but without any of the physical, you know, reliefs. It's just the rumination of just, yes. chat, chat, and it's often taboo, and it's often very uncomfortable. And um, having found out that that existed and then identifying with it I started to dig there it was like well that's X marks the spot you've been given all the information that you can be given now it's just find out George just and it's uncomfortable to do this once you're because it's I think in the immediate the comfortable thing is to just let it tick over you know but I would just dig there dig there dig there um, and I'd have conversation with friends, I'd have conversations with myself, I just I would analyze. I got into this like practice of thinking about thinking, thinking about thinking, thinking about thinking. Um, and that was the I went hunting. It was like the, I found a problem, I went there, I turned up and I dug, dug, dug. And there was a really, I was quite, it did me a lot of good because in the second verse, there's this like, imagine having a thought and then thinking it again, thinking it again, thinking it again. And we repeat it just one too many times. It's like a little bit awkward. We go for five thinking it agains instead of four. Mm, I pushed mm. for six or seven and Joel was <laughs> like, back in your box, my friend. <laughs> five is enough. Um, and so we had done, the vocal that's on it is the only vocal I ever recorded for it. I just held the mic in the studio to get a demo vocal down. And so then during the lockdown, that was one where Joel started really coloring it in without me there. Yeah. And would send, so that's the song that I've got the most versions of. And again, Clinky, uh, the guitarist, sent over some bits and yeah, I remember getting it through and it kind of was a breakthrough of how the record could sound as well. Lots of space for your voice. Yeah. And that lovely tech, that sound that I was talking about, which yeah. is at the beginning of the intro, and you've spread it like a texture yeah. right through the track. It's really lovely. And you, are you saying that sound is sort of like echoing that the thought process? That, yeah, the whole that, thing, I think, like, Joel, we never really had that conversation of, this is what the song's about. You know, like that, that often doesn't happen. I think more because it doesn't need to. Yeah. It happens in conversations outside of the songs. Um, but I think I don't want to speak for Joel. I don't know how he felt about producing the record. I think I had ideas. I think there was a reservation at, at first. I think um, I would say that was like a breakthrough moment. So any of that that you're talking about, the kind of the colouring in to that extent, I think that would be for him to take the bow, not me. <laughs> That's very sweet. Or, you know, plug the, I give props to the unsung heroes, yeah, the producers yeah. and the writers. We come to track number nine now. Uh, another highlight for me. This is In the Morning. You could busk this, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what's, and that's what's great about yeah. songs sometimes. They, you know, it's like a poached egg. Yeah. It's nowhere to hide. <laughs> it's a great thing. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, like I, I went through a breakup before the lockdown, just before the lockdown. And in my experience, it, what it made me do more than anything was think about breakups that had come before, you know, and just the idea of it. And it's like, like, oh, yeah, you always were just by yourself. You just chose to be by yourself next to somebody else kind of thing, if that makes sense. And I don't know, I kind of, there was, in in, in it ran parallel with this like the sleeping went out the window a bit there was there was man I, I look back over lockdown with rose tinted glasses and I remember now the first lockdown I was terrified that the headlines you know I believed everyone I read and you know who knew what no one knew anything it felt um 
but there was just this I chose to believe I think that kind of it will be all right in the morning and maybe that's an idiot stance I don't know but it felt good to sing and that kind of it'll be all right in the morning and, and then that th there was something that I feel like I learnt songwriting on this record was at the end of the second verse I sing this repeat which is hey hey it's a new day hey hey it's a new day and then I was like oh and now that can be your middle eight and then your middle eight almost becomes a chorus of its own because it's you've heard it before so that was like a for me a songwriting ah that's a little trick there which is cool I love that song and and I was really grateful that we were given the space to leave it as bare as it is. I love as well, there's a um, trombone player called Matthew Benson who I tour with today. He lives in Northern Ireland and um, he came over for some sessions to play trombone, but he's also like an awesome pianist and singer, like his voice. And you can hear him at the end. He kind of sings the last choruses with me. Well, a lot of people do, but you can hear Matthew Benson. So that makes me smile. It, it feels like um we were talking about the the emotional crescendo right at the start of this that i went hunting might be a sort of an emotional turning point where the curve starts to really turn up and you are just flying yeah i you think don't give flying. up kind of flirts with it but doesn't quite get there that what you're talking about and i think i went hunting you're absolutely right i think that it's a bit there's been times where playing through the record with certain people in the room where it's a bit almost god am i comfortable with this you know this is yeah, and I think in the mor in the morning stays with that. What's the next song? A sweetest human being alive, you know. And, and so, and before you've got you know so much space for your for the story to unfold, mm. your voice and the story, you know. And the, the, you've got, you've got this home straight of the album that's so emotionally strong. I was really struck by it, and I talked to someone whose opinion I really respect, and they said exactly the same thing. Right. So I love the album just gets better and better yeah, you know yeah. it will it's, you know it's great but yeah. like emotionally speaking just gets stronger and stronger yeah. so we come to sweetest human being alive so this is is this a like a a future you talked about having been through a breakup and being alone and stuff like that is this like a the the are you imagining a future of the one which is in itself a very interesting thing the yeah. one you know I don't think so so much I think like th th that came again from the first lockdown context to contextualize this situation a little bit I was in a flat without even a balcony just for five weeks and by myself and it was a bit you know I, and I'm not saying woe is you George I know we all experience these things but that I went mad the, 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 like my family were like come home and I just thought well I either have you drive me mad or I'll drive myself mad and I'd rather you know still like you by the end of it was my thinking um and I started to play these guitar chords which I learned years and years ago um and I was like right George just do away with the chaff do away with the chaff what is it you want what do you feel you know remember and this is something that people have tried to teach me in lessons before and things it's like no one has to hear the song it's it's the same thinking behind keeping a journal no one has to read it 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 doesn't have to exist past just getting it down throw it on the fire afterwards it doesn't matter and so there was like i missed people i missed my family and i missed my friends and i missed the freedom of course you know, and so there was just this longing, you know, and there's some people with the lockdown, I don't know how they did it, but they managed to come out the other side fitter, healthier, happier than ever before. I was the opposite, like, not that I can, I was the kind of like, well, <laughs> what, what time can I open the bottle of red wine yeah, There wasn't everyone, you were either a hunk, a chunk or a drunk. Yeah, man, <laughs> I think I was a chunk and a chunk. <laughs> um, so, there was that going on and I don't know that song just em embodied that feeling and when we went to record it we kind of we got a dub Ugh, it, it was a mistake it was a mistake which is fine because it didn't make the cut but at first we got a double bass and there was the baby grand and the, and we it was more like a mahogany session now, don't get me wrong, these like acoustic sessions have their place for sure, 
but that's like as a reimagined version of for the for the thing you're delivering and then there was a point where Nikolai just played it on the piano and I sang in the room we weren't recording which I I regret <laughs> I wish we'd recorded it um because I got really emotional just after that take it was like oh no we've written a ballad <laughs> <laughs> and so and just do it lean into it and it's I would say my favorite song on the album I still feels like uh I'm grateful well it is so romantic yeah. and it you know you've got Lovely Tom Walker, who's now currently making a great living out of just being unashamedly heart on his sleeve romantic yeah. and talking about writing songs about his missus and how, you know, he loves her so much and how great she is for him. And, you know, it's 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 in that territory of romanticism. I think the thing that because when I say, oh, no, it's a ballad, it's because it's not that we haven't tried in the past. It just hasn't been sincere. It's not been anywhere near sincere. I think on the last record, there was a song called Hold My Girl. I think I was nearly there, but I didn't own it, you know. In hindsight, I think it's a great song. I just think on this one, you just, it was like we turned it up, the kind of romantic dial. It was like, yeah, why are you pretending it's anything else? That's yeah. what this song is. Yeah, like you say, lean in. Sometimes yeah. you just got to lean into it. Yeah. Excellent. So we come to the penultimate track. Now, Love Somebody Else. This is another lovely song. Mm. And really, like, you're in the sweet spot of this emotional crescendo mm. on the record. Um, it's such a gorgeous vibe to it. It sort of took me back to almost like 70s kind of soul pop or something like yeah. that. It, I mean, obviously it sounds a lot more shiny and, mm. and, and, and new and, and maybe, you know, less analogue. But where 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 are you, uh, where was your head for this track? Th this was, um, I really love this song. It came from almost like a stream of consciousness thing that I found again in an old journal. And I wasn't able to use every line. The first verse is, um, it's all for the taking, happiness and warmth. It exists, but not forever. And it was like just line after, it was almost like each line stood alone, but they worked together. And it made for quite a strange melody almost. It's not like a, and then because it was like, oh, that felt like a, you explored a new way of putting words together for the second verse, and it's my favorite verse on the record, I think, I wanted to see how many times I could get one kind of sound shape into a verse. So it was, it ended up being, I bought an old Mercedes and this say, so like it's say, you yes. have to, yeah. like it doesn't <laughs> read like this, but this was where the idea came yeah. from. And it was, I like, don't worry about it necessarily landing at the end of each line, just see where you can get those in. So I bought an old Mercedes and drove it down the motorway. And on every inch of that old car, babe, I spray painted yeah. your name. Yeah. And it was just a like, I took a lighter from my pocket. I set it up in flames. And it was just like, I don't know, that was inspiring just to try that. Um, not for any reason other than just for the words. And that was a a cool thing and then th this through a few different experiences that happened in the time of making the album there was this idea of relaxing in myself and the whole idea of the gold rush of this isn't going to last forever and that's true of the things you love it's true of the things you're uncomfortable about and so we did this kind of mantra refrain at the end which was the good the bad nothing's going to last forever and the, and it was a really again i just feel grateful to have experienced these things because we just put a microphone up in the room and 12 of us stood around it and sang it and sang it and sang it and sang it and it was really cathartic yes yes i you you, you brought to mind you know what one of my most poignant moments of my life was being at my friend's funeral and he played um a flaming lip song where flame where Wayne Coyne goes you know everyone you know someday will die but it's just a it's yeah. such a it's such a beautiful we come back to that funeral yeah you know it's just it, it, it's there's there's so much positivity there it's a beautiful song man mm, you you, you know you're you finish so strong yeah with this record um and now we finished with track 12 sun went down that's a title you've got to put at the end yeah was this a was this you'd finished and oh we've got to we've we've got to write an ender or do you already have this i and think for the team that's right but i knew i had it so again in that first lockdown that i was doing these things which is 
I just do these things, but th th I would give myself challenges. So it would be no screens, no talking for 24 hours, no food, no do it for 24 hours, uh, and whatever. Just see what it does. If th what does it make you think? And um, in that first lockdown, there was a little mini heat wave, as we like to yeah. call them. And so I just pulled this armchair into this window and I sat there. I wasn't, I think it was a no screens 24 hours. And so I was reading, I was playing the guitar and I was trying to nail this new, new to me picking technique. So I, like, I just sat there doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And then I was like, well now, George, this is useless to you unless you can sing over it. So then I had to get used to that. And I sat there until the sun was going down. I was like, oh, you've been here all day. And this was at the point where just my mood in general had started to lift. And if at any point today I talk about feeling more relaxed, it's almost like I can trace it back to if not that moment, but something shifted around those days. And so therefore they're really special days for me. Um, and then I wrote two and again, I wanted to approach it like that mantra thing of just see what it's like to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. So of course, I'd sit at home and just sing it on a loop. Um, and then I had two alternative lyrics to end with. One was, I could die now, I'm so happy, I could die now. And the other was, if I die tonight, just know that I'll be smiling as I walk into the light, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one felt a bit too wordy and clunky, And but you could repeat them both. And so, yeah, the, the, this like, funeral thread throughout the record or this I don't know life it feels like a celebration yeah, of life it you does, know it does like, and then I did the thing I did the thing that you shouldn't do because it's overdone <laughs> I recorded the birds in my garden and the album ends <laughs> with the it's, birds in my garden dude you got away with it oh, you no. got away with it because because well the thing is that you you set us up you know, like what I, I keep talking about this emotional crescendo, but I think it's a really important thing to consider in the journey of the album. Mm. You've completely set us up for that. Mm. And so we're like, we're completely open yeah. to it. You Do know, you know what's I, like last night, because the album came out today, but I got home from a gig we'd played last night at say half 11 and I knew that it would be out at one minute past 12. Mm. So I was like, go on, stay up, listen to it. <laughs> so I did, I put it on and the way I've got it set up is that the album then repeats and I completely forgot that but so the bird song came in and then it started again with dan 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 and I was like god that works yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean that's a cool thing yeah it feels like a cycle ah oh, that's wonderful ah oh, wonderful journey through this record and I and I'm I'm really glad that I did this with you today I I, I it was really great meeting you I'm really uh sincerely very grateful to have been able to do it because it's not and you will know this there will be few opportunities to do this and it's good for me because unless you revisit it you you forget it's easy to forget um but no i am I, um, yes thank you very much you're really welcome